Hello everyone, welcome to the next Blueprint Masterclass. I'm Max, a pro player for Time to Throw and base builder here at Blueprint. Today, I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know about the Super Minion Super Barbarian strategy. Super Minions are one of the best counters to the toxic Double Rage Ring uh, meta bases, often getting near the same value as the Super Archer Blimp, but for fewer spells and less risk. Super Barbarians are a great follow up because of their versatility and ability to work well with your heroes. And since I started using the strategy, my hit rate has increased to above 70%, shows the strength of it. Um, Rami from T TPM Esports, he also is known for using the strategy, his hit rate is nearing 80%. And the best part is the strategy is relatively simple, all players can learn it. So in this masterclass, I'll cover everything from where to use the blimp, how to properly set up your heroes, and much, much more. Alright, so let's get into it. So I'm going to start off just by showing a replay of how this attack uh, looks. This is from one of my attacks in the championship qualifier. Uh, stage 4, unfortunately, we ended up losing to Dark Phoenix and not picking it through, but that's alright. So the basic idea is we'll start with the Warden and some balloons to send the blimp uh, full of super minions, and it's going to get near the town hall. So we're going to pop it around four tiles away from the bomb tower, and then double clone, invis, rage, just trying to get a ton of value, you know, basically the Super Archer Blimp. So we can look at here and getting Town Hall, Expos, Rage Towers, Multi Inferno, CC, Scattershot, World Champion, just a ton of value, just clear that whole section of the base. And then we have um, a bunch of Super Barbarians to help support the heroes. I mean, just there, you can see the power of the Super Minions, they're just gutting the entire base. So next we're going to have the RC go for the core, there's not much core left, but the Eagle Artillery will send a skelly spell to distract the single Inferno. Let's speed through this a little bit just to get an idea of how the attack works. Just funneling the Barbarians, we'll have the King and Queen working to the scatter. The King ability is great to go through the Rage Tower. And you can see there's... I just have so many barbarians alive. The heroes have so much hit points. Um, the attack is absolutely crushed. So this just hopefully gives you guys an idea of how the attack works, and well, shows you how strong it is. <laughs> there we go. So, so here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to just drop your troops. Invis and clone on top of them. Because they're not going to spread out that much. They're going to mostly clump up. They spread out a little bit here, but typically they you, you don't want that. You want them to spread out as much as possible so they don't all stack on the same targets and waste their long shots. Because the minions have six long shots. You want them uh, to utilize those the best you can. And so how you can avoid this is... Invis about two, two and a half tiles away, and then cloning uh, in, a, in a line. So the first one to cover the maze, and the second one a little bit staggered, even further behind. And you can see they spread out a little bit more here. So for the timings of the invis, this is also really important because you don't, if you wait too long with the invis, you your mains can get hit by a bunch of the rage defenses and they can die pretty quickly, or archers may come out of clan castle and waste even more of their shots. Um, so you want to have try to have in, uh, perfect invis. It's better to be a little bit early than a little bit late. So you can either count to four right after you drop the first invis. So that would look like I drop the invis. One, two, three, four. Drop the next invis. I didn't spread out the clones that time. And yeah, count to four. Or the other thing you can do is, um, the invis actually has a little bit of visual cue that you can see when it starts to fade. So you can just watch the invis. Then you can notice it starts getting faded a little bit, and, um, yeah, I wasn't fully paying attention there, but then that's, that can be your cue, and that works uh, just as well as, um, if you practice that a few times. So yeah, remember, this is the most important part of the attack, so getting all these timings and placements right um 
is the most important thing you can do. Uh, so start with two ends on the cannon just to make sure that the pathing to the scatter is cleaner. Drop the blimp outside of the, the sweeper range. Drop the invis, then pop the blimp. Can you see how the invis is, like, covers the edge of the minions? This means when you pull them backwards, that makes sure that they're in the invis and not in defense range. Again, that'll take some practice, but. Rage, spread out beautifully. You can just make it to the scatter. Well, the minions would have gotten it anyways, because they're so powerful. Um, not too compact here, so they'll easily get all the targets. See, they even made it to the eagle. That entire section of the base is gone. Alright, so the first thing I see here is that my warden is alive. Um, I'm trying to think, is there a way to keep him alive? Uh, there's probably not, because the air defense will kill him. But if the owl was still alive, then what you could do is send the royal champion to clear the air defense. And then um, use the apprentice warden with my main heroes, because the warden would stay alive. But I know he's going to die, so I can't do that. So the first thing I do is I start using some barbs to just start the funnel because I want to send my I know I want to break here on the rage tower and cannon to get my king into the scatter shot because that's where you want to use his ability you know, to clear the range and scatter. Um, so I'm going to send my royal champion here at nine or eight at eight thirty to work and clear this pathing, get the expo eagle and this multi that my heroes won't easily access. But to this I need to make sure that the funnel is there. Clear the wizard tower, and I know there'll be a good bit of damage with the expo, so I'm gonna use the apprentice warden with her. Um, I also want to funnel some at 12 to make sure my queen and queen can walk right from here from the arch tower and go just go straight here pretty much to the inside the scatter. All right, so that's what I'm doing. Send the champion and the apprentice warden with her, she needs it the most because I can support my heroes with barbs. I use lots of barbs here to make sure the gold storage goes down just so my king can go inside. See the titan to work into the rage tower. Freeze the multi just because it was hitting a lot of the barbarians and it's not like a lot of high value later on in the base. Pop the king ability, will easily make it through the enemy queen and the scatter with so many barbarians that he spawns. Look for the wall break. It's important that you walk with the junction here, just on this specific base, to get them access into the next expo comp as well. Yep, I just use a couple more barbs to help clear around, and I still have 18 that's playing to work through the back of the base. Um, and I still have so much time left, you know, I can't see in the replay, but it's probably like a minute, minute and a half at this point that I, I could just delay them, you know, use them to work with my heroes, but I just went ahead and send them out just for time. I know it's so many. And it is absolutely wrecked. But that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching and sticking through to the end. Um, it means a lot to me. Don't hesitate to shoot me a message on Discord. If you enjoyed the video, if you learned something new, or if you have a, any question, I'm happy to answer you guys. Um, remember to use code blue. And um, that's all for this masterclass. Thanks again for watching. and. Have an amazing day or night. See you guys.